The National Broadcasting Company's sponsorship of this program constitutes no endorsement of the opinions, philosophies, stubbornness, or confusion of the persons represented therein. However, with the conviction that marriage remains the most popular domestic arrangement between friendly people, NBC takes pleasure in presenting one of the most distinguished couples of the American theater, Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin, as Liz and Ben Marriott in the new dramatic series, The Marriage. Do you remember that article about highbrows and lowbrows? Well, I... I wouldn't say that Liz and I are exactly highbrow. We're somewhere in the middlebrow classification. We like a Gershwin ballad and a Cole Porter musical, but on the other hand, we enjoy Mozart and Beethoven and Stravinsky. And we like to think that the kids will go along with this. Emily went to the children's concert to the Philharmonic for one season, and Pete... <laughs> well, Pete's another story. As a matter of fact, this story... It started on an evening when Pete and I were alone in the living room. Pete? Yeah, Pop? What's that you're humming? Oh, just a song. Sounded familiar. Not very popular. I thought you were humming Beethoven's Eighth Symphony. Sure. The words are easy, too. Words? To Beethoven's Eighth? Sure. Beethoven, he was great. In his symphony we call the Eighth. Where did you pick that up? In school. Music appreciation. You appreciate that? Sure. Why not? Come on, Pete. Come Pop. on. No, it's all right. Just come on. Liz. In the kitchen. Liz, I have discovered a new art form. What are you talking about? Listen to this. Go ahead, Pete. Give her the Beethoven. Oh, Pop. Beethoven. Shh. Go ahead, Pete. It's all right. There's nothing wrong. Well, Okay. Beethoven, he was great. In his symphony, we call the eight. <laughs> Any more, Pete? Sure. Amaryllis is by geese. I never knew. Any more? Sure, lots of them. Narcissus is a flower of wood and stream. It came to Ethel, Bert Nevins, while in the dream. Is nothing sacred? Liz, do you realize what's going to happen? Every time they meet a piece of music, it'll have one of these singing commercials tied to it, like a tin can on a dog's tail. I don't mind, really. I know what you mean. Someone once told me that champagne tasted like vinegar and seltzer, and ever since it has. Like the Bach B minor mass with additional lyrics by Irving Berlin. <laughs> ben, are you really upset, or is it just an excuse for coining epigrams? Think what they could do with Tchaikovsky or Schubert. Schubert? I know one by him. Which one? This is the symphony... That Mr. Schubert never finished. I know why. He knew this would happen. <laughs> I don't even dare repeat the lyrics to the Moonlight Sonata. I hadn't given Pete's school much thought in a long time, but a few nights later it came up again. I was writing a brief a creative literary masterpiece because the law wasn't very strong on our side. And Liz was helping Pete with his homework. What were the principal contributions of the ancient Egyptians? Pyramids, papyrus, hieroglyphics, and mummies. Is that all? Isn't that all it says in the book? Um, yes. Yes, it is. Well, then that's all. Uh, do you know what the pyramids were, Pete? Sure. One of the principal contributions of the ancient Egyptians. No, I, I mean what they were used for. Mom, this is homework. I know, but the pyramids are very interesting. Maybe we could look it up in the Book of Knowledge. All we're supposed to know is what's in the book. Well, don't you want to know? I haven't got time. Ah. Ben. All right, Pete, let's go on. Okay. Tell me about papyrus. What? Papyrus, you just said it. You didn't ask the right question. Well, what do you mean? You've got to ask the question the right way, like in the book. Oh. Oh, you mean, uh... What were the principal contributions of ancient Egypt? Pyramids, papyrus, hieroglyphics, and mummies. See? That's ridiculous. Ben, you're working. Pete, how about the rest of your subjects? Spelling, reading? I don't have to do them. Oh, you don't? No. It's 
it's the same as last year. The same as last year? Ben, your brief. What do you mean it's the same as last year? We're doing the work all over again, that's all. Miss Whitaker says it's easier. Oh, she does. Tell me, Peter, what is this Miss Whitaker like? Old and very strict. And you heard her say that it was easier to do last year's work over again? Sure. Hey, Pop, what is this, a cross-examination? <laughs> no, 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 of course not. Oh. Liz, do you realize later. that this... But if the teacher is later, giving a... Later, later. I suppose Liz was right. Shouldn't be discussing Pete's teacher in front of him, even if she did need a little undermining. Later turned out to be when we were going to bed. Do we need a quilt? Not tonight. Liz, about Pete's school. I suppose I... the class is overcrowded. That's no excuse. Last year's work. How do they expect a child to keep up that way? It's disgraceful. Liz, you know, the trouble with us is that we ship the children off to school and forget about them. Oh, do we? Ben, open the window. Do you realize that Pete spends five hours of every weekday with this person? Took more care in picking the babysitters. What do we know about this teacher? An old battle axe that's supposed to be educating our child. Well, we don't know that she's an old battle axe, for one thing. Well, Peter says so. I don't think he's a very reliable witness. Oh. You're on my side. Shove over. No sense in minimizing the problem, Liz. You ought to look into this school business. I ought to. Pete has a father, too. I don't know how many times I've asked you to come to those PTA meetings. You agree that they're important, but you always manage to find an alibi. Well, now, most of the evenings I've been working. Oh. You let me know when the next meeting is, and I'll make it. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow? 8.30. Oh. Okay. I'm going to do a little digging about this last year's work business. <laughs> you may find a PTA meeting a little, uh, a little elusive. Don't worry. I've had some experience in cross-examination. When I want to find out something, I'll get the facts. Uh-huh. Ben, you get up and turn off the light. We arrived at Pete's school five minutes early. I wanted to have a chance to buttonhole this Miss Whitaker and get the truth out of her. The building was like many other schools in New York, built sometime in the 1890s and remodeled to the extent of having indoor toilets. The general effect was that of a steel engraving of the Tower of London at the execution of Anne Boleyn. What's the matter? Is this it? Well, don't you remember? I never saw it after dark. <laughs> Distinctly Charles Adams, isn't it? Oof. We're room 502. Come on. Where is she? Liz. Which one is she? Miss Whitaker was there across the room. The, the one with the gray hair. In the black bombazine? That's not bombazine. Looks as though it ought to be. Come on. I want to get to her before the meeting. Excuse me. Excuse me, please. Well, hello there. Uh, hello. Hello. Excuse me. I don't believe we've met, have we? No, excuse us. I'm Dr. Carnahan. Uh, oh? Well, how do you do, ma'am? I always like to meet the mothers of my children. What? Uh, excuse me a minute. Ma'am, uh, Dr. Carnahan is the principal. Oh, <laughs> Well, I'm Ben Marriott. How, How are you, Mrs. Marriott? Our Pete is in the fifth grade. Uh, I was trying to reach his teacher. Miss Whitaker? There. Yes. There's something very important. Uh, excuse well, me. I'll tell you, you a secret. Yes, I will. I don't mind if it leaks out at all. <laughs> excuse me. Miss Whitaker, <laughs> exactly. Well, you guessed it. If they asked me what I couldn't do without, I'd say, take away the visual aids, take away the Sanford Binet intelligence test, but leave me Miss Whitaker. Yes, sir, she is a teacher's no, teacher. I'm not sure of it. I just wanted to ask her Yes, sir, your little girl's very lucky to have Miss Whitaker. It's a boy. It is? Well, congratulations. I never would have guessed it, ma'am. And when he grows up, he'll have Miss Whitaker, too. Uh, isn't Miss Whitaker close to retirement age? Whitaker is like the brook, oh. Mr. Marion. Men may come and men may oh, yes, go. Yes, yes, I But know. I go on forever. Oh, that is Miss Whitaker, you understand, not I. Well, I understand. <laughs> if you'll excuse me. I always I'm... like to meet my parents. And now, are there any questions that you might want to ask about the school? Well, as a matter of fact, yes. Dan. Good, good. Uh, 
It's uh, about the level of the work in the fifth grade. That's a now, very I... good question. But I haven't it asked It shows you. a very sound grasp of our whole educational problem here. But you don't it's know It's a pleasure, what I... you know, to meet a parent with that much knowledge of pedagogy. Well, if you'll excuse me, it's about time I started the meeting. The meeting was chaired by one of the mothers, a young woman who seemed to have committed Robert's rules of order to memory. Dr. Carnahan was called on to say a few words. Having been given this in, she took a mile. And I want to welcome you fifth-grade parents, many of whom I once knew as fourth-grade parents. It's been going on for 20 minutes. I want to ask I a question. I have one other then, announcement. Then, sh- With the high percentage of Spanish-speaking children from Puerto Rico enrolled in the school, we're planning a Caribbean festival in order to bring our parents closer together. That is, the separate sets of parents. It will be on Wednesday the 12th, and we're hoping for a 100% turnout of parents. I am going to ask a question. Particularly the father. I've got a right to ask a question. I'd be very happy to sign up volunteers. Ben, put your hand down. Ah, I I see a hand. There's a volunteer. He means you. Ah, yes, Mr. Marriott. I'm... I'm glad to see your father taking the lead. We're, we're very glad to have you. What did I do? The uh, first meeting is next Friday night. Meeting? Of the Fifth Grade Fathers Caribbean Festival Committee. You've just volunteered. The meeting went on and on. Afterwards, when Liz and I left the old building, we stopped and looked up at us. This is the new part, Ben. When the rear wing was built, Ulysses Grant was in the White House. Look at those windows on the first floor. Colored paper cutouts. That's the kindergarten. It's sort of pathetic. That terrible gray stone front and those little splotches of color. Yeah, well, come on. I warned you. I warned you PDA meeting might prove elusive. I spotted that Whitaker woman right after the meeting while you were getting your coat, and I'd have reached her, too. But I was soaked up by Dr. Carnahan again. He is a little absorbent. Yes, he wanted to congratulate me about volunteering. The Fifth Grade Fathers Caribbean Festival Committee. South America, take it away. (laughs) I'll get out of that. (laughs) Ben, you wouldn't chicken out. Elizabeth, if you'd been in the Army, you wouldn't say that. What gets me is that I wasn't able to get any kind of an answer from that Whitaker woman on Pete's repeating last year's work. Well, you did accomplish something. That isn't all I accomplished. I ran around Carnahan's end, and no mean feat, by the way, and managed to catch Miss Whitaker before she went back into the woodwork. What did you find out? Nothing. Carnahan was bearing down on me on the starboard tack, but I'll find out. At the next PDA meeting? No. Tomorrow night. I invited Miss Whitaker to dinner. I broached the subject of our expected dinner guest at breakfast. Oh, no, Pop, no. You have some objection, Pete? Oh, no. Well, what is it? Don't you like Miss Whitaker? Sure, but she's a teacher. I know, that's why we're having her. But you don't have teachers to dinner. Well, we have lots of guests to dinner. You've never objected before? You never had a teacher before. How about Uncle Arthur? You like him? He just teaches school. He isn't a teacher. You mean he isn't your teacher? That's right. Look, Pop, suppose I tell her you're sick. Or I could tell her Emily has the mom. Never mind. We've invited Miss Whitaker to dinner, and she's coming. Oh, no. You've said that. Can't you explain why you're so upset? Well, teachers are teachers. Over here. And parents. Well, they're parents. Over here. And never the twain shall meet, eh? But what if somebody should find out? Pete, Pete, I think you're making too much fuss about this. We're just interested in your schoolwork. Mom, he's going to cross-examine her. Never mind, dear. You go get your tie on for school. But, Mom... Go ahead. I've got some rights, haven't I? See what I mean? No. Our child is afraid to have a teacher come to dinner. Why? Ben, it's just his sense of propriety. Children are very conservative. What have politics got to do with it? Not politics. He wants situations he's used to. The teacher in school, the parents at home. When you get it mixed up, he gets nervous. Uh, Sounds as though he'd got something to hide. Well, that isn't it at all. I I hope. Well, once I get that Whitaker woman here, I'll get the truth. Ben, Pete's right. You can't cross-examine her. Not when she's arguing. There are some things that are more important. Pop! What is it? 
I could tell her you broke her leg. Don't bother. Well, maybe you will. Being somewhat uncooperative about these things, I managed not to break my leg by evening. Emily neglected to contract the mumps, so the dinner went off on schedule. Uh, Pete, would you like another helping of potatoes? No, thanks. I'm not hungry. Oh, Miss Whitaker? Oh, no, thank you. This is fine. Well, Miss Whitaker, very nice meeting you this way. There's so many things I want to talk to you Mom, about. Mom, can I have some more potatoes? Pop, would you please pass my plate? Uh oh, certainly. Well, Miss Whitaker, you know, I wanted to speak to you at the PTA meeting, but now we can have a real talk. Pop, uh, my plate. Here you are. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, there are a number of questions about the schoolwork, which I think... Gravy, please? Uh, what was that? Would you pass my plate for gravy, please? Here you are, Peter. Don't you think you could decrease the traffic up and down my side of the table? I'm sorry. Oh, what was I saying? I knew that if I had a chance to speak to you... Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll withdraw that. Ben... I, I mean, it isn't just Peter's marks, you understand. Oh. Uh, tell me, Miss Whitaker. I know a you... riddle. Pete, I'm talking. I'm sorry. That's better. It's a real good one. I'm sure Miss Whitaker hears enough riddles all day, Peter. Oh, no, I collect them. All right, go ahead, Pete. What did the bop musician say when he saw the end of the movie Salome with the head on the silver platter? We all give up. Man! Dig that crazy dessert. <laughs> I read that in the newspaper this morning. Are you quite finished, Peter? I'm afraid so. Well, Miss Whitaker, what I've been trying to get <laughs> you know, out of... It is amusing. Uh, what is, Miss Whitaker? That crazy dessert. <laughs> Dinner went on over a number of conversational barricades hastily thrown up by Peter as he retreated to a defense in depth. Finally, dinner was over. Cigarette, Miss Whitaker? Uh, no, thank you. Well, Pete, guess you better go into your room and start on your homework. I thought maybe I could do it after Miss Whitaker left. Peter, go ahead. Well, good night, Miss Whitaker. Good night, Peter. Good night, Mom. Good night, dear. Pete? I'm afraid Peter doesn't seem very hospitable. Oh, children never do. They're always embarrassed. Afraid their parents will make a faux pas. Now, Miss Whitaker, <laughs> I'm glad to be able to talk to you. So am I, Mr. Marriott. You see, frankly, we were disturbed by a number of things. And I made up my mind to find out. I see. Do you feel... No, let me put it this way. Don't you agree that the most important attitude a child can develop is the desire for knowledge? I suppose so. Ah. Then, don't you agree that the job of the teacher No. Is... Well, I haven't asked the question. But I don't think you have to. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to see you. It's about the job of the teacher. But, Mr. Miss Marriott, what... do you know how many children are in your son's class? Well, no. Fifty-four. There should be only 20. Do you know how many teachers were appointed in this city last summer and failed to report for their jobs? Well, I read something about that. I, I don't remember 200, the 200. At least three in our school. Why, one of the new teachers quit to take a job driving a brewery truck at an increase of 30% in pay. And he didn't need a master's degree for that. Miss Whitaker, I realize that the school system is in difficulty. Well, now, that's not the point I'm making, Mr. Marriott. I'm not a financial expert or an economist. I'm interested in the children and in their parents. The parents? The only thing that can change our school situation is the parents, because I can't do that job alone, and I know it. Now, that's something I wanted to ask you about. For example, uh... now, what do you do to supplement the school program, Mr. Marriott? Well, I, I... Do you take Peter to the museums on trips around the city? Do you help him select radio and television programs that have some positive value? Well, yes, to a certain extent. Of I... course, you'll be participating in the school program, and I think that's very constructive of you. I will be? 
Well, yes, the Fifth Grade Fathers Caribbean Festival Committee. You were one of the few volunteers. Oh, oh yes. Of course, I told Dr. Carnahan it was a mistake. I don't think you meant to volunteer. Well, as a matter of fact, I oh, wasn't... Oh, so few fathers are interested enough in the school program. Well, I'm interested. Now, for example, we wanted to get someone who's used to public speaking to act as master of ceremonies, perhaps an attorney. An attorney? But so few professional fathers seem to have a sense of responsibility to the school. I don't think that's true. You don't? No, I think, well, attorneys have as much sense of responsibility as anyone. Enough to volunteer as master of ceremonies for the Caribbean Festival? Why, yes, of course. As a matter of fact, I'm a lawyer myself. Yes, I know. I'll tell Dr. Carnahan he can count on you as MC. Well, I think this has been a very constructive meeting. And now I think I'd just better say good night to Peter and be off. I've really had a lovely time. When I came to bed that night, Liz had a shawl over her head and a rose between her teeth. All right, all right. Seriously, Ben, what did you think of Miss Whitaker? Well, I don't know. She's a bear on cross examination. I was awfully impressed. She's such a dynamic woman when you consider her age. She's over 60. You notice she ducked my questions. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I think she answered all of them, in a way. How about Pete's repeating last year's work? I didn't even get a chance to bring it up. No, you didn't at that. Well, I'll find out about it. I'll see her again. At the fiesta? And that's another thing. I thought that was pretty low. But you volunteered. When I was in the Army, the sergeant used to say, I want three volunteers for a detail. You, you, and you with the glasses. That was always me. (laughs) Miss Whitaker must have served in the same platoon. (laughs) On Friday night, the fifth grade fathers committee met in the school auditorium under the direction of that eminent Latin American, Dr. Carnahan. All right, gentlemen. Gentlemen, let's proceed with the organization of our little band. Mr. Schultz, you're playing marimba. Mr. Garcia, the guitar. Mr. Fernandez, the bongo drum. Bongo, see. Well, let's see uh, who is left over. I am. Oh, yes, Mr. Marriott. How do you feel about the maracas? Well, I can take them or leave them alone. (laughs) (laughs) Well, all right. Here you are. (laughs) Like that? Uh, more or less. All right, now, if you'll just uh, come in when I give you the downbeat. You start, Mr. Marion. One and two. <laughs> Mr. Marion? They got caught in my cuffs. <laughs> All right, now. One and two and... Is that all you can get out of them, Mr. Marion? I kind of froze. Do you have trouble with your coordination, Mr. Marion? Certainly not. We need rhythm, Caribbean rhythm. Did, 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 diddy? Did, 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 diddy? These don't go, did, 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 diddy. Mr. Marion, we borrow these instruments from the kindergarten rhythm band. I'll try again, Dr. Carnahan. Uh, perhaps it'd be better if we uh, saved you for the MC portion. Uh, would you mind just sitting down and waiting? But I can well, do thank it. You. Not, uh, I could learn. I'm sure you can, Mr. Marion, but time is limited, you know. All right. The rest of you gentlemen... One and two. I was a little depressed, so I went out in the hall to get a smoke. There's somebody out there already smoking. I borrowed a light from him. Here you are, senor. Oh, thank you. Uh, you a fifth grade father? Huh? Oh, see, si, my, my boy, fifth grade, see. Si. I'm Ben Marriott. I, Fernando Ramon. How do you do, Mr. Ramon? Uh, are you in this Caribbean festival affair? Festival? Oh, oh yes, yes. I seen son from Puerto Rico. Oh, then you really know what you're doing. Uh, you're from Puerto Rico, aren't you? From San Juan, see. Si. My family come here just last month. And your boy's in school already? My, that must be pretty hard. Uh, does he speak English? Un poquito. He learned a few words in Puerto Rico, but he, very good boy, fast. He learned much faster than his father did in night school. Now, I suppose that's always the way. How does he like the school? Oh, very, very much, mostly. 
They they very good in this school for Spanish speaking boys. The others help teach. Oh, you mean there are extra teachers? It's, no 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 no. The the teacher said to the English speaking boy, "You help Jose." So they read last year's book to 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 to, to make it easy. Last year's. They did last year's work so that the kids could help each other. Así fue la cosa, señor. My Jose, he tell me his friend, very good teacher, talk about him all time, all day long. Pizza, 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 pizza. He must be very fine boy. Yes, I think he must be. wanted to talk to you. In the middle of the night? I was at the school tonight. You ought to keep covered up. I met one of the fathers, Mr. Ramon. Ramon? That must be Joe's father. I had quite a talk with him. You did? Uh, he told me that his boy, Jose, liked school very much. Well, he hasn't been here long. Peter, when you told me you were doing last year's work over... Why didn't you tell me that it was so you could help Jose? You didn't ask me. Is that all, Pop? You don't mind helping Jose? Don't mind doing that work over again? Why should I? Well, don't you get bored repeating the same thing over again? Look, Pop. Joe told me the first week he was in New York, he got lost downtown, around 34th Street. He couldn't speak more than a few words of English. He kept asking people how to get home, but nobody could understand him. He went to a policeman, and they took him to the police station. Go on. There wasn't anyone who could speak Spanish. I was thinking how I would feel, lost and nobody I could talk to. Nobody who could understand anything I said. You see? I see. This way... If Joe learns how to talk English and read okay, he doesn't have to be scared. He can take care of himself. Anyway, Miss Whitaker says we'll both be learning something important. You know, I don't know what she means. Joe's the one who's learning, not me. I think I know what she means. Is there anything else, Pop? I don't think so, Peter. Good night. Good night, Pop. Ben and Liz Marriott will be back in just a moment. In the meantime, let us extend an invitation on behalf of our stars, Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin, as well as the National Broadcasting Company, to all of you to drop by next week at this time for another half-hour observation of The Marriage. Today's story was written by Ernest Canoy with Irene Hubbard as Miss Whitaker, Wendell Holmes as Mr. Carnahan, and Juano Hernandez as Mr. Ramon. David Pfeffer was heard as Pete. The Marriage is an NBC Radio Network production directed by Edward King. This is Bob Denton speaking. Oh, Ben, you mean he took the maracas away from you? Didn't even give me a chance, but I'm ready for it. You him. are? Mr. Ramon said it was only fair. Pete was teaching his Jose English. He'd teach me the maracas. Listen. Listen.